Hello everyone, this is Mark from MJ Aquascaping. Hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm partnering with BRS Fresh to bring you guys a very simple guide about the basics of CO2. Which plants need it, why do they need it, and can you have a beautiful plant tank without adding CO2? We're gonna answer all those questions, so let's get started. Okay, so let's start at the very beginning and talk about what CO2 actually is and why your aquarium plants might need it. So to put it very simple, CO2 stands for carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is formed when you combine carbon with oxygen. Of course, oxygen is all around us and carbon is just a basic element that can come from many different things. When we breathe out, we actually also release CO2. So there's plenty of CO2 available in the air. That's why when you're trying to grow a house plant, for example, you don't need to worry about CO2. But for aquatic plants, it's a little bit different because CO2 concentrations in water are a lot lower. Now, every single plant, aquatic or immersed, doesn't matter, they all need CO2 for a process called photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is when a plant is using light, uh, water and CO2 to create sugars and oxygen. The sugar is used for, by the plant itself to grow and the oxygen is released and is used by us and many other things on this planet. So to put it very simple, plants need CO2 so they can create their own food and grow. That's it. Now let's talk about CO2 for aquarium plants. So the majority of people will just use regular tap water for their aquarium. And the concentration of CO2 in tap water is not zero, but it's not very high either. So that's why sometimes people like myself, for example, choose to add extra CO2 just so they can either boost the plant growth or grow more demanding plants. Luckily though, for a lot of plants, just a little bit of CO2 that's available in the tap water is actually already enough to grow. And these are of course the easy plants. If we look at aquatic plants, they're usually divided into three different categories, easy, medium, and advanced. And in general, plants in the easy category will do just fine with those low CO2 levels. Plants in the medium category will probably still grow with low CO2 levels, but they might struggle and not look their best. And plants in the advanced category usually will not do very well with low CO2 levels. So if you want to have a planted tank, but you don't want to use a CO2 system to increase those CO2 levels, your best option is to stick with those easy plants. And don't worry, you don't have to be afraid that there's not going to be enough options, because actually there's a lot of easy plants. Um, just to make it easier for you, I've created a list with easy plants for beginners, and I'll leave the full list in the video description. Now let's talk about how we can increase those CO2 levels, so we can also have a go with the medium and advanced category plants. Now there are many different ways of adding CO2 to a planted tank, but the most reliable way is with a pressurized CO2 system. And this usually consists of three main parts. First up, we have the CO2 cylinder. Now inside the cylinder, there's a large amount of CO2 gas stored at a very high pressure. And this high pressure keeps it in a compact and liquid form. At the top of the cylinder, we have a valve and the valve controls the release of the CO2. So when you open this valve, a small amount of CO2 is actually released like so. The next part we need is a CO2 regulator and the main job of the regulator is to reduce the high pressure from the cylinder to a lower more manageable level. Every regulator should have an adjustment knob to either increase or decrease the pressure and depending on the regulator they will also have some gauges which usually show the current pressure and also the amount of CO2 that's left in the cylinder. Now this regulator right here is from CO2 Art and I have to give them a shout out because I've been using this one for a very long time. I think this was actually my first high-end CO2 regulator. I've been using it for many years and it has never failed me. This one is actually also available from the BRS Fresh website. And I'll make sure to leave a direct link in the video description. Okay, so we have the CO2 cylinder, we have the CO2 regulator. Now we just need to get the CO2 into the aquarium. And there are again many different ways to do that, but the easiest way to do it is with an in-tank diffuser. So the CO2 is pushed through a thin membrane and is then formed into these really tiny micro bubbles. And the, the smaller these bubbles, the better, because the smaller they are, the easier it is to dissolve them into the water for the plants to make use of it. So those are the three main components of a pressurized CO2 system. This system is then hooked up to a timer, and as a general rule, the CO2 turns on one hour before the lights turn on. Now, if you want to know exactly how to properly set up a CO2 system, just like this one right here, let us know in the comments, and then we'll make a video about it. Alright, so to wrap it all up, every single plant needs CO2 for photosynthesis, just so it can produce sugars, release oxygen, and grow. Tap water doesn't contain a lot of CO2, but it should be enough for all the easy category plants. You can choose to inject CO2 if you want to boost the plant growth or try to grow advanced category plants. 
If you want to start using CO2, I suggest you invest in a good quality CO2 regulator because it will last you many, many years. That's it for now. Subscribe to the BRS Fresh YouTube channel for more videos just like this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.